This is Pre-Calc 12, Chapter 3.1. This chapter is on transforming graphs. So we're going to be looking at scaling and reflecting here and here. But today we're going to look at translations, so here and here. If you're familiar with standard form or vertex form with quadratics, this should be relatively easy. So if we're looking at just translations, we have y is equal to f of x minus h plus k. And the workbook likes to use this form, y minus k equals f of x minus h. Either way you answer it on the test is fine. This is what we call an explicit equation. This is called an implicit equation. So the graph of f of x is translated h units horizontally, and positive is to the right, just like in the quadratics. And k units vertically, and positive is up. Let's look at an example. We're going to plot g of x is equal to f of x minus 3 plus 2. This means h equals 3. k equals 2. This is right. And this is up. Now let's just take a quick look back. It's h is 3 because we have x minus h. So we just flip the sign here. This is negative 3, we look at it as 3. If this was plus 3, then h would be negative 3. Okay, to translate this, we're going right, and we want to transform key points. And key points are solid dots on your graph, or you can use grid points. There's not too many grid points here, but here's a grid point when it intersects the lines. So we go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and we have a key point. Take this one, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and another key point. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, and a key point. We have three key points, so we can just connect the points. These are straight lines, so it's not too difficult and label your translated graph. So the domain, we can calculate the domain. One, two, three, four, so it's negative four. And that's x, and we go to negative one. Now, some people like to write negative one is greater than or equal to x, greater than or equal to negative four. This is not incorrect, but that's not our usual standards. This is the correct direction to have it. And we look at the range. 1, 2, 3, so that's negative 3, so that's an equal to y. Let's put an x in here so you don't get confused about which is correct. And we have 1, 2, 3. Now, without being given the graph and just being given this, we can calculate the domain and range of G. All we have to do is add these translations. So we add 3 to here. This is negative 1. We add 3 to this one, and that's 2. We're going up 2, so we add 2 to this. This is negative 1. And we add 2 to this, and we get 5. We can check this with the graph we just made. This is negative 1, this is 2 for the domain. And we have negative 1 for the range, and 5 for the range. So in general, for translations, we can just add h to the domain of f to get the domain of g, add k to the range of f to get the range of g. h does not affect the range, and k does not affect the domain. don't affect 
each other. So the easiest way to translate a function, plot the original function, if not given. Translate the key points or grid points. Copy the curves between the key points. So what we did was copy this line. And H is positive to the right, negative is to the left, K is positive up, and negative down. And just a reminder, the key points are the solid points on your graph. These are the key points. Determining translation from descriptions. So we want to be able to convert this into an equation. Translate down 3, this is K, and write 2, this is H, and that's equal to negative 3, and this is equal to 2, as G of X. So G of X equals f of x minus h plus k. So we don't put plus minus, we just put minus. Translate f of x left 5 and up 4. So this is not in the same order. So watch the order. It's not always given the same way. Watch order. Left 5. So this means h equals negative 5, and up 4, k equals 4. So g of x equals f x minus negative 5, so that's x plus 5, and plus k, so plus 4. And make sure you write this as an equation. You can't just write f of x minus 2 minus 3. It needs to be g of x equals f of x minus 2 minus 3. Okay, so if you're given a graph, you need to be able to determine the translation. So here's an f, here's a g. We're given corresponding points, key points, p and p prime. This is pronounced prime. We want to determine the points algebraically. H equals, I know you can do it by inspection, but we want to practice with the easy graphs so that when we're doing the hard graphs, we're using the proper algebra techniques. So we have PX prime minus PX. So PX prime is negative 2 minus and px is negative 3 minus negative 3 so we have negative 2 plus 3 that's 1 k equals py prime minus py so py prime is negative 2 minus, and PY is just zero. So that's negative two. Again, we can easily look at this and say, this is right one, this is down two, right one, down two, but we want to use the algebra techniques on these simple problems so that when the harder problems come up, we know the correct technique. We need to finish this off with an equation g of x equals f of x minus 1 minus 2. And remember, it's x minus h minus h. Here's some definitions that will help you. The image is the function after the transformation. So this would be our g of x. And this is also our prime coordinates. The pre-image is the function before the transformation. 
so f of x. And it's just for the interval given, okay? So here we have the whole domain. So the image and pre-image are for the whole domain. Back on this one, we had a limited interval, okay? So this is the pre-image and this is the image. So now that you have those definitions, we can look at a backwards problem. The following is the graph of the image. Always make a note on your questions of a translation of right two and up three. Draw the pre-image. Okay, when we're going forward, we're going right two and up three. If we're going backwards, that means we're going left two and down three. Let's look for a key point. That's a grid point. It's also a key point. This is the minimum value. It's the easiest one to translate. And we have a couple more grid points here and here. It's not a key point. Those are just grid points. This is a key point. So we go left. One, two, and down three. One, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. One, two, one, two, three. And then we just connect the points. And we label our graph f of x. And that completes this lesson.